All right, so here we are in the second progress and learning video. This time it's with Tia Ma, and I'm excited to share her progress with you all. And first of all, Tia, thank you for being here, and I'll let you introduce yourself. Oh, it's an honor to be here, George. So I'm Tia Ma. I live in Gainesville, Florida. I teach Qigong. I teach a trauma-informed sort of Qigong, focusing on neuroscience and understanding the, the nervous systems and helping people who may be a little intimidated with joining a martial art because there's a lot of lineage and grandmasters. I call myself a Qigong artist yeah. because I really want this to be accessible and fun. In fact, I say, let's play Qigong because yeah, I'm trying to trying to get the fun in it instead of the overwhelmment, which I'm hearing from a lot of people. They're intimidated. So Yeah, I love it. I love it. And, and you have led our group, our business group in a, in a Qigong exercise before, and it was wonderful. And um, I, I don't know if it's uploaded publicly, but anyway, uh, you have plenty of Qigong videos on, on your YouTube and, and elsewhere. Um, so um, let's talk about what you've been learning in your business in a way that I think will help those who are listening as well. Um, I mean, one place, there's lots of places we can start. We could either start talking about what you've been learning in terms of content making, or no, we could on. talk. My light just died. Let me plug oh, it okay. in real quick. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Yay. All right. The, the lighting is back. So yeah, we can, we can either start with talking about how you've been transforming your thoughts regarding content or regarding your productivity, anywhere you'd like to start. I'm going to start at the beginning yeah. because I spent a year last year coach shopping. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so I've been a massage therapist 34 years. And so this is a big transition for me. I've done Qigong for 27 years, but I've never really gone online. I've been in my teeny little room doing massage one-on-one, -on -one, loving it, but now I'm ready to go larger. So I knew I needed help. And wow, are there a lot of coaches out there. So I spent, I spent a year taking all the free classes. They're like, sign up for this, sign up for that. And I did, and I was blown away, learned a lot. But they were asking 10 grand, 20 grand, 50 grand. And I'm like, who are you people? I was clueless to how I would ever get there. And, um, and also had a pretty strong sense. I was in the middle of the ocean and I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> so it was daunting. Um, but when I finally found uh, a, a dear friend of mine, she recommended you in just November. And I took the Facebook ads class because I was launching a Qigong course. And I saw one video of you and my whole nervous system relaxed. I felt like, oh, you're not a shyster. You're not trying to sell me a car. And um, I had the sense you had a lot of information on business, but you were spiritually dedicated. And that is just such a key for me because my whole life is spiritually dedicated. And I don't like separating out business from spirituality or my money from spirituality. And so you really came across as integrated. And I definitely noticed how my body responded. So that was fun. And then your price tag was a lot more doable. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Try to keep so it I appreciate that, way. that for you. Yeah. yeah oh, I appreciate it. Yeah. You know, um, it's so interesting that in my, in my field, there are so many people who think that they can't be credible unless they are charging, you know, the $10,000 price tag or whatever. Um, and there's partly the whole, you know, credibility esteem thing, but also it's like, well, that's the most profitable way to go. Why wouldn't you charge 10,000? Why would you charge a thousand? Make you charge ten thousand, and still have some people sign up. Um, but it's like it's like if you if you pay that God, those giant gobs of money, uh, you know, it's not like that person can make you do ten times the amount of work. <laughs> it's like you still need the. I mean, well, I think what we both prefer is like you still need the gentle stepping in. You know, it's like we all have our process, and you can't rush that process because the the learning doesn't get embodied as much. So 
I'm grateful that, you know, you're, we get to have a year together where, um, you know, you get to kind of like, hopefully play with business too, <laughs> not just play Qigong, but play with business too, and then find your way there. So how are you having a different relationship now to your business or how is that? I mean, of course, getting from offline mostly to now online is, I mean, you've done online stuff for a while, but now you're kind mm-hmm. of focusing more on that in part because of the pandemic, but but yeah, so so how is that how is that shifting your relationship now? Well, it's been amazing. So like I said, I felt lost in the ocean and then I joined Master Heart and then I felt like I had a map of just how lost I was. <laughs> and it relaxed me because I'm like, so I took the um, business planning class and that was just so eye-opening. I felt like you really handed me a whole map. So I understood and mainly I'm level one. I have a couple things in level two, a couple things in level three, because I am doing classes, but it helped me understand just where my gaps are and why I've been feeling scattered. And so I love that feeling to have the map and to, to know, to have an actual checklist of what, where I'm lacking and what I've done. All right. And so I did have a sense of like, Hey, I am doing some good things. So that was nice too. Yeah. Um, so I'm taking the content class, the framework class. I did the business planning class and I did all of the Facebook ads class. Yeah, yeah, totally. And yeah, that's continuing, of course, uh, as you practice more of it, you'll, you'll have to dip back in, I'm sure. And, and, and then do yeah, more definitely. of that. But, but um, so let's talk about that's thank you. And let's talk about content. Um, you, I mean, when I first saw you, I already saw, well, this, this girl is going to, she's got some good content. I mean, she's got the, I mean, you are, you are, um, I feel like a natural when it comes to content creation. Not everybody is. I feel like I wasn't a natural. I had to really start from ground zero and, and build up the confidence, but you, you came to it. I mean, maybe we could start, we could talk about video, right? Like you're very comfortable on video or you seem to be. How did that develop? What's, what's that? I mean, and this is, this predates you meeting me. So it's like, how did you become comfortable on video is one is, is one question I'm going to ask you. So, you know, I teach trauma informed for a reason, because I have a lot of trauma. Mm. So I've done a lot of therapy and I've done a lot of uh, communication courses. And it's a big part of my spiritual practice that I remain authentic. And when I'm authentic, there's nowhere to fall. You know, there's no like, oh my gosh, I have to remember this because I'm trying to portray something. And if I just strip that away and be my authentic self, I can trust that. And so I do feel like it's a big part of my gift to the world is to continue my healing process and let people watch. Um, So I do that with video and I'm an artist, so I like I like the backgrounds. I like the lights. I like playing with that. And I love video editing. So once I got into video editing, it started being like video is just another color on my palette. So I'm having fun with all that. Absolutely. I think people should, and I'm going to put a link or two or three uh, in the notes of the video for people to check out, um, you know, different places where you check out your videos and video editing is something that I noticed that you do. And it's like, you do it in such a fun way. Um, what software do you use for video editing? How I'm do you like it? I'm just doing real simple iMovie. iMovie. Well, you know, when, when you say simple, it's not necessarily simple because, I mean, just opening up iMovie. I mean, I have I'm, I have a Mac, so iMovie comes with all Macs. Um, I open up iMovie, and it's not obvious what to do. So it's really great you. that you actually took the time to learn it. How did you learn? How did you learn iMovie? Just by playing around or watching the way, YouTube? Or... The way I do everything, I just dive in without reading the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> and well, I'm like, what does this do? Oh, that didn't work. Well, let me try 15 other things until I figured out how it worked. That is... So I'm an intuitive learner like that. I love it. I love it. I mean, I wish more of us were willing to do that. And it, I mean, that speaks to your, your courage. I mean, your playfulness with things. And so that's really great. So when it comes to sharing your message, now, one of the things that people, uh, you know, you, you come from uh, the, the massage background, for example, is very hands-on. It's like, well, I have to be in the room literally with the client for them to experience change. Now you are moving to where 
you're transmitting information. Of course, your presence, you know, there's transmission there. So how do you tell us, give us any kind of encouragement or insight for everybody watching this who is also moving from the in-person to working online? Well, that's, that's my first question for you. I have a second question, for okay. you, which, is, which is more about, you know, how do you communicate transformation without being in the room with someone? But let's start there. How, do you, how, how, do you, how are you transitioning from offline to online? So my coach, he told me I was really smart. <laughs> you said that in a video once. He's like, you people, you are very smart. And somehow that just landed so deep because as an intuitive artist, empathic person, it's challenging necessarily to believe what I have to offer will help anybody, right? But I'm getting that more and more. And another thing you said is that no matter what you share, you still have a touch of shame after you share it. And I'm like, oh, cool, yeah. because I do. <laughs> I'll post something, whether it's an article or a meme I just made or a video, and I'll think it's dynamite and I push send. And then I'm like, I think it sucks. And so when you shared that, I'm like, okay, it's just part of the process. So I just try and acknowledge the shame and keep breathing, stand up, do some Qigong, move through it. But um, another thing that you taught me in the Facebook ads class is that you're not bugging people. They're either gonna look at your stuff or they're gonna be bored and scroll on. They're not like, oh my God, you posted another thing. I have to look at it. <laughs> and that was a serious voice in my head. Yeah. So I was posting like once every three months because I didn't wanna be annoying. Right. And so when you told me that, I'm like, okay, I've been working on shame. I'm gonna scooch that over. And, and in that very first video that I took with you, I went ahead and for the first time ever, I asked my personal audience, hey, do you guys want to like my business page? And I had 300 people like it, but I had never wow. asked people because I felt yeah. like, well, if they like it, they'll sign up. Yeah. But I went ahead and said, do you want to sign up? And they're like, yep. So that was fun. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And then, that... I, and then yeah. I love your concept of um, nourishing and net caring. So I started just doing fun Qigong memes and I did little videos like a Qigong minute and I, I wasn't selling anything and they loved it. It was definitely the, the furthest reaching content that I had was just like a Qigong minute because there's, there's no overwhelm. It was getting people acquainted with Qigong and it kept their attention. So one of the, thank you for, for sharing these, these insights. One of the things that people sometimes say uh, regarding embodiment work, you know, body work of some kind where you're, you're, you know, your clients need to be um, yeah, doing the movements and, and things like that is how do I communicate? I mean, like what I do is work, like ideally I work one-on-one -on -one with somebody. Um, if I can't work one-on-one -on -one with somebody in person, in the room, then I prefer to work, you know, one to many, but have them in the room when I can, you know, kind of like adjust them or, or whatever it is to now, you know, you're creating content. If you're on a video, you can't see the other person on the other side of the screen. So how do you maintain whether you want to say a passion for it or a connect connectedness to your audience when you can't see them on the other side of the screen? How, how do you, I mean, just share from your own personal sure. you know, way of doing that. Yeah. So you addressed that also in the Facebook class and you said, um, get the mean people out of your head because I really, for years, when I'm on a microphone or thinking about doing video, I have the meanest, meanest people in the front row and there's like 10,000 critics. That's what's been my audience. So I'm just, I've been, I guess in my head, I was preparing for all the hate. Let me just be strong in front of the hate. And you're like, just imagine your favorite one client or your favorite friend in front of you and talk to them. And I'm like, oh, that's different. <laughs> So it really shifted gears for me. Like, yeah, why don't I imagine someone who likes what I say and they smile when I talk. And so that's helped me kind of just practice feeling accepted 
which is good practice for in general. Yes, yes. <laughs> Have a absolutely. loving voice in my head instead of the critique. Totally, totally. That's great. So you teach Qigong. You also do other work too, which, which we can touch on as well. Um, maybe we could touch a little bit on what you imagine your business model to be. I know it's still kind of um, evolving, but mm -hmm. what, what are you seeing as your business model nowadays? Like, what are you moving into? Like, how will you be helping people? I mean, it, it used to be massage or it used to be, you know, in person. Now it's online. So like, for example, I mean, you offer courses. I mean, that's one thing. But tell us more right. what you're, yeah. So I, I, I think my vision is a school for resilience. Okay, Like there you go. healing from trauma. Mm. And Qigong's a tool, writing's a tool, mm -hmm. creative art is a tool, yeah. uh, education on the nervous systems, education on love language, on the Enneagram. Like I have a lot of tools I love to share. So I'm thinking of, I don't know if I can call it a school or like, holistic training for trauma recovery, something along those lines. So a larger umbrella that fits all the information I have jammed into my head and body. Yeah, 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 no, this is great. And that way um, you get to bring the uniqueness because, well, few people can actually integrate all that stuff, but you, you, you can, because you've actually embodied that learning. And so you're able to share sort of this integration and that's what makes your framework unique, right? Um, so are you uh, working with, you're, you're, you're still working with clients one-to-one, -one, I imagine. Mm -hmm. And then you're also teaching classes. Um, mm -hmm. Is this school going to be like a group program? So Yes, yeah. I love that concept of a group program. Like, I'm really a big believer too in affordable. I don't want to be a big ticket person. There's plenty of people doing big ticket everything. I want it for the people who, you know, are regular folks who, you know, have a little bit of money that they could 50 bucks a month, 100 bucks a month. I would love to like support people on that um, front and then reach wider people, reach a bigger audience on that way. So yeah, I would love to do a membership program. And of course, I'm not there in my levels yet. And I'm really practicing not overwhelming myself because there's so much I need to do still. And so much I realize like I, I don't have in place. So I'm just trying to like let the vision brew and see how all the pieces line up. But I love the concept of a membership program. Awesome, awesome. Well, we only have a few minutes left and I, I was, don't mean to put, put you on the spot, but I think, I think you'll be fine with this. I wonder if you could lead us in a bit of Qigong. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> to kind yeah. of complete our, our, our time. And so maybe like, I don't know, maybe three, three or so minutes we could, we could do this. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to teach a little Qigong that's good if you're on the computer a lot. Oh, since great. Since a lot of us are. Mm -hmm. So get your feet flat. Sit up straight in your chair. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Exhale out the mouth. Inhale in the nose. And if you exhale out slower and longer than your inhale, you start to shift into the parasympathetic nervous system. So rub your palms together. This is a wonderful way to increase chi and place your pinkies together and pour that chi now into your face. With your hands a couple of inches away from your face, just circle, slow circle, inhaling, very slow, like you're moving through honey. And you imagine light from your hands pouring into your face. And switch directions. Good. Place your hands in front of you, fingers forward, palms down, float your hands down. Good. Now look to the left. Keep your chin parallel. Just inhale. And exhale back to the right. 
Bring your head all the way to the right. And inhale to the left. And exhale to center. Roll your shoulders back. Three times. And roll forward. Good. We're going to finish. We're going to raise our arms up high and stretch, and we're going to exhale a large sigh of contentment. Inhale. Ah. 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 Let your hands drop on your thighs. Two more times. Inhale. Ah. Ah. Last time. Inhale. <sighs> the research is in that if we sigh content, our brain puts out the brain chemistry of contentment, whether we're faking it or it's real. Wow. Yeah. Excellent. That was wonderful. <laughs> I'm going to make sure in the video description, be sure to watch at least the last five minutes to see how this is done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Tia. Really Thanks, George. This was work. fun. Um, your website is tia-ma.com. Correct. Of course, the links are going to be in the notes of the video. So uh, I'm also going to make sure I put the links to your video channel. Um, Tia has, as you can tell, wonderful exercises for us. So be sure to check those out. Tia, thank you so much, one, for um, being in Master Heart and being your wonderful self there. But two, just being willing to share your authentic um, growth journey with your audience. It is a blessing uh, to everyone. So thank you. Thank Thanks you. coach. Yeah. Appreciate <laughs> thank you so you. much. All right. Bye. See you soon. See you in class.